All right, so briefly, who can share with me one thing you picked from what Ede Jenim did with us for the two days? Mm -hmm. Who will share with me just one thing you learned for the two days that we were with Ede Jenim? Yes, my sister. Please, your name? Beatrice. Beatrice. Okay. Okay, spiritual excellence is a foundation for what? All other excellence. Who else? Who else? My brother, you want to talk? Who else? Okay, there's a hand at the back. Okay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Some of you don't agree. <laughs> the purpose of education is not just for you to secure a job, but to prepare you for heaven. To prepare you for heaven. That is very key. And that is the purpose of education. You know, education is different from schooling. Most of us think that schooling is the same as education. So we have a saying that don't allow your schooling to interfere with the education. Education is a total embodiment of every knowledge that you have to acquire to make it to heaven. Schooling, so there are a lot of us receiving education. Not everybody is schooling, but people are getting education. Hmm? Despite Enko didn't get much of schooling. You don't say Despite didn't get education. He has obtained a lot of education in life. That's why he's able to do the things he's doing. He's highly educated, but he's not highly schooled. Do you get the difference? So a lot of us are just getting schooling. But we are not getting education. So it is very important. So we'll be looking at education as a blessing, developing the right mental attitude, developing a good study habits, uh, taking good notes in class, uh, tips for staying motivated, uh, preparing for exams. I know these are the things that you wanted to see from this class, but we wanted you to build the spiritual aspects at the beginning. That's why Elder came in with the excellence components. When you have that as a mindset, all these things will work. But we, we have not spiritually built yourself. The rest will not work. So it is key for you and I to be able to know how we can be able to excel. James chapter 1 verse 17 says that whatever is good and perfect comes down to what? From what? From God. Our Father who created all the light in heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. All good things comes from God. So every good thing that we are getting, like including education, comes from God. Do you know that not everybody is privileged to have the opportunity to receive the education you are getting, both formal and informal education? A lot of people don't have that opportunity. So when you have the opportunity, you must thank your God that God has given you the opportunity. You must always remember that anything and everything that is good that happens in your life is from God. So for you to be able to go through uh, KG, okay. for you to go through KG, go through uh, the nursery, go through uh, the basic school class one to six, go through JHS, go through SS, and get opportunity to enter into the tertiary institution, it's a blessing from God. Do you agree? It's a privilege that not everybody will have. I remember very well, somewhere in the uh, late 80s, when man was growing up, I realized that in my village, the highest education you'll get is after a middle school living certificate. Those days, who were, it was later that the SHS system, uh, the JHS system came. So middle school living certificate was the highest certificate you can get. After the equivalent to the BECE, you even go and write it in another town, so you go and sleep there. There was no school in my village. So when you are going, the whole uh, town will hire uh, this truck, uh, the truck that most secondary schools have, that carried their food to the pantry. <laughs> Bone shaker. That's the best car the whole village will hire for all the candidates. So if the candidates are more, the, the bus will go twice and take them to the village and stay there to write the BEC equivalent. Now, the day that the students are supposed to, when they finish their paper and they come, the whole village meets them with powder. 
to pour on your hair that you have graduated. And I saw that the powder is a powder of limitation. Because when the powder gets into your head, you have finished your life. You become a palm wine typer, you become a farmer, you roam around the village, and that is your end. Some of us, when we go to our villages, our mates, age mates that we started life with, they look like they are 60 years. So education is a blessing. When you get opportunity to school and to get the best out of education, I tell you, it changes your life and turns things around for you. That is very, very important in the life that we find yourself. I have made it a PDF, so pardon me if it's not rolling. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says that, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to do what? Get well, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. If you are brilliant, don't think that is by your own mentality. It is purely by God's grace. It is purely, there are some of you, I remember very well, when I was going to class six, in class six, I could not speak English. Because brought up from a typical village, and at that time, I have sold kerosene for a number of years, and I was filling portals so I can get money. So I filled the portals, I gather some money, I buy kerosene from my village. I walk from my village to Mankesim. You, you pass three towns before you get to Mankesim. And when I buy my kerosene, I carry it to my village, and I saw in the evening. I realized, I said, no. You see, when God reveals something to you early in life, and you discover what you want to be, I realized that I don't want to stay in this village for the rest of my life. So I started selling kerosene so that I can move to the city. The day I got to the city, I didn't know anybody. I, I only said that my mother, they said that my mother stays at somewhere, that woman in Accra. So I went looking for her. And fortunately, I met somebody who has come for a funeral in my village and was coming to Accra. So we sat in the same car. And I asked the person, he said, he knows where my mother stays. I said, praise the Lord. So I'm going there. That is the beginning of a change in life. When I got there, they said, no, no, no. My stepfather said, you can't stay here. We don't have enough space for you. I said, OK, if it's the fees, which would be a problem? I can pay for my I mean, I work in the village. I can work in the city and pay for my fees. But fortunately, things were iron. But I was not going to the same school with my stepbrothers. I was going to Inga. We call something Lady Keshani. And how you know. That is the Iran shift system. So I was attending the shift system while my brothers were attending preparatory school. So the shift system, you go government school, you go, you close at 12. Sometimes in two weeks' time, there's a shift. You go in the afternoon. You start from 12 and close at 4. That is the school for the poor people, that we, those of us who can attend. My brothers were holding better school bag. I was using five kilo bag of rice. You know that bag? That was my school bag. You, when God said, it is God who gives wisdom. I got to the class, and here was I. And the teacher was speaking something gibberish in my ears. I didn't understand the English the teacher was speaking. So he said, you, I'm talking about you. Your friend was saying, then I mentioned money because I was not getting there. Because in the village, five days in a week, Monday, you have full class. Tuesday, you will headmaster's farm. Wednesday, there's a, a job for you where you carry maize, sugar cane, and all that, and the teachers get the money. Thursday, sports. Friday, jamboree. <laughs> so the only active day for learning is what? Monday. And the teachers come, and they use Fanti for instruction. So I can speak Fanti very well. They use Fanti for instruction. So English as English, it wasn't there. So here I am in Accra. And this teacher was frustrating me. I said, I cry for us, I don't here. He said, my friend, you have to go back to class four. Hey, I finished classes. I'm going to JHS one next year. I should go back to class four. So because I can't express myself in English well, I didn't argue with the teacher. I just picked my sack. And I went straight to the class four classroom. And I got there. I was taller than all the children there. I said, no, I can't stay here. So I went to home. I didn't go. I went to sell somewhere. I said, do I go back to my village? Because that place, at least, I can kill some grass cutter, uh, do some few things, and enjoy life. 
But I determined that, no, I said, I want to change in Accra, so I'll stay. In the evening, I told my mother about it, and she said, okay, I'll go with you the following day. She didn't get time in the morning, so we went in the afternoon. So we met a different teacher who said, well, I will accept you in class five and see how we can try you. God said, it is me who gives power for wisdom and for everything for us to be able to be wealthy. I started from class five with the students there. First term, I carried the whole class. <laughs> First from bottom. And uh, second term, I was trying to look at the best students in class so that they can become my friends. And I had one. He became my friend. And that began the whole process. Fortunately, I found out that this particular teacher was staying close to my area. And he said, Franklin, I want to help you. Tell your mother that uh, they should pay for extra classes for you so that I can take you through math and English. I said, my mother is struggling. My father is not ready to pay my fees. My mother is paying this one. So, so <laughs> I ended up paying for that classes. I saw polythene bags at Cantomanto. Every When I'm in the morning shift, I sell in the afternoon. When I'm in the afternoon shift, I sell polythene bag in the morning. So by 11 o'clock, I have to finish my sale so that I can get dressed and go to school. And I was able to raise money to pay for that extra classes. And the, to cut a long story short, by the time we got to classes, GHS3, I was a school prefect, the best student in the school, within three to four years. That is how God can change dynamics. I wasn't an Adventist then. I wasn't born into the church. My father is still not an Adventist. I wasn't born into the church. But when I got to know about Adventist church, that my mother went to Bekwai SD, so she had become one. So when she was there, I said, okay, I started following her, started learning some few things. But even you go to the children's class, they speak English. So me, I don't talk <laughs> because of English. I'll sit quietly at the back. But that is how God can be able to transform. I learned about fighting. And I said, every money I make from selling polythene bags, my mother didn't know I was selling polythene bags at County And any money I make, I fight on it. And I told God that, God, open my mind. I want to speak English like those people. I started going to Ghana Library Board, reading every material I can lay my <coughs> hand on. And that brought my habit of reading and writing. And but today, I have three books in the market. And that is how God began to change the story. When God says that, he gives the power. It is not from anything. If you want to begin to excel, trust God's word that he's the one who will give the power. That's why Dejanu took us through the excellence. If you want to excel academically, first of all, make your way right with God. So I got baptized at the age of 15. That's when I became an Adventist. At the age of 15. And that is how God began to change the dynamics. It says here that all education is a gift from God, preparing you for what? Your future and purpose. So education is not just schooling. It's the entire preparation for your future and for God's purpose. So you have to begin to think that whatever education you are getting is for the purpose of God. You use it for God's purpose. So don't think that you are studying the uh, lab tech, the engineering, the agri, the nursing, just for your sake to make money. It's for God's purpose to be achieved. He said that statistics shows that people who are educated tend to be more hot, prosperous. They are healthier, they live longer, and their kids have a greater likelihood of being successful. We are not talking about schooling, remember. We are talking about education. As soon as you get enlightened, when you are enlightened, the way you do your things are different. You don't drink alcohol like how the village people are drinking alcohol. You don't behave like how the village people who do not have education. They have not got anybody to tell them what to do. As soon as you begin to be enlightened, all other aspects of your life begins to change. And there's a likelihood where it affects your children. So my generation, though I came from the village, my generation will be different. My children will be more polished than who I used to be. That is the essence of education. And education, as I've said, is a blessing from God. 
Here are some few statistics, then we'll get into other things. You know, 20% of the world's population is illiterate. Ghana, averagely, we have over 40% of our population illiterate in Ghana. Meanwhile, we'll be talking about Robert Mugabe. Zimbabwe have more than 90% literacy rates. Zimbabwe. But Ghana, we have 40% of our population who cannot read and write. So if you are in that, you, you are not in that category, you have to thank God that you can read and write. You can read and write. You have to thank God for it. Two thirds of all the world's illiterates are women. And India and China make up 52% of all the world's illiteracy. So 40% of the population of Africans, African continent are illiterate. But uh, let me just keep some of these things so that we can move quickly uh, into some of the things we wanted to, we want to do today. Let me just shift uh, all these ones. We don't have the time. Now, good things in life does not come easy. How do you get higher education? Higher education doesn't come on a silver platter. Not all of us are fortunate to have the opportunity to attain higher education. There's always some level of opposition to the blessings of God in your life. I could have relaxed when I came. I remember when I was struggling through, as a, through government school. The day that we have to fill our form for secondary school. You know the schools I selected? At this other college, first choice. At this other college, second choice. <laughs> Agri Memorial, third choice. My headmistress looked at me and said, ah, why are you choosing at this school first, at this school second? I said, I'm determined that this school, if they don't pick me for the first, they have to pick me for second. <laughs> and she said, this school is a high class school. First of all, the fees, secondly, the, the grade they are looking for is, I said, Madam, I will work for it. You need to work for it. I'll come home and I have to wash all my brother's clothing. I, so I love washing. <laughs> and that is because, you, and whilst my brothers are watching television, I can take all their clothes and wash in the evening so that the following day I can get time to learn. I wash their clothes, then I'll be able to have some time to learn. And when I come, while they are watching TV, I'll be outside learning and preparing myself. When the BEC people came, I had my first, I had a good grade. Apart from GAN, a fancy boy learning GAN, because I have to write GAN as a language, that's for BEC. I had, that time we were doing it, uh, one, two, three, four, so I had three in GAN but how to score all ones in other subjects. So I decided college picked me, and here I am, no money to go to school. I stayed home two weeks when my friends were in school until I had some few things in my chop box to go. When you are determined, God add his favor to it. And Pastor Skist has been teaching us this week that God will not come in until we have done what? We have done what? We have done our best. So you must be able to do your best. For some of us, God does not have option than to bless us. And it's been difficult on the line. It's been difficult. There will be opposition. If you want to strive to the very top, you yourself, don't... Some of us, our parents have to tell us to go and learn before we do so. You must have a personal conviction that I want to get to this level and work on your own. And my brothers will share some things with you. They were not spoon-fed. Some of us, you have to spoon-feed you everything. Even after they give you 1,000 to school, your parents will call, Iskana Sana. Hey, for us, you didn't get that opportunity. You didn't get that opportunity for you to, at that time, you know, we're using the, in secondary school, we're using the, uh, the pay phone, in the phone booth. So you wait. When people have talked and have left it one unit, say, Master, give it to me. And you do what we call SOS. Ma, ma, money, or I die. <laughs> because within, within that second, if you don't say all your words, the one unit will run out. And your mother has to go and wait at a communication center. You tell her which time you are going to call. 
so that she can be waiting at the community. You people are fortunate. You have mobile phone. You just pick and you are. You can just say hello, mom. Those days you queue with a pay phone or with a booth, and you both. so sometimes you walk on the ground, pick uh, uh, cards, telephone cards. So you try them in the booth. Which one can get you one unit to say your SOS message, save our soul message. <laughs> so there are a lot of opposition. Probably uh, Otaba once said that if n- there's nothing chasing you, you don't know how to run. Some of you, there's nothing chasing you. Because at least home is a bit okay. Averagely, you are able to get two square meals to eat in a day. Your parents can move around with some few things. Some of us, your parents have cars to move you around. So averagely, you are comfortable. But when I knew that I'm coming from a village, where there was no light, and I was like, you have to learn with the moon. Something was chasing me. So you have to be able to make sure that you go against all odds to be able to make it. When I go to the class, I decided on my first day in class, the teacher said, my brother, welcome. What's your, I mentioned my name. Which school did you attend? I said, I went to Abeka for JSS. He said, Abeka for JSS, where is it located? Because in the class, Jack and Joe, Morning Star, Prince Emmanuel, <laughs> all the people from the best of schools. So how was I going? So they, 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 they all started laughing at me. And they were saying, oh, I become four is in one of the uh, Zongos. That's what they told the teacher in Accra. But I didn't mind whether I've come from Zongo or whatever. <laughs> the plan is that I'll come to, we are all in Addis Ababa College. Yes. That's the most important thing. You are all in the school. And... I told God that God, when I've come, so I don't open my troubles for people to see. <laughs> when everybody has finished eating, then I go to the room because all that I have, my mother is good, a caterer, so she can prepare good shito. So I have a good shito and gare. That is all is in the chop box and one mug. So that one mug is meant for one Sabbath where I feel like enjoying myself, then I will use it. <laughs> so it's reserved. So you don't open it. But when God blesses you with wisdom and knowledge, People would now begin, oh, can you teach me this? Okay, I can teach you. I haven't eaten. You have to make sure. Oh, I have a lot of conflicts in my chop box. I have a lot of noodle in my... So somebody will give you one box of conflicts, one full container of noodle, so that you can be the part-time teacher in the afternoon. And that is the opportunity God offered for some of us to survive with the rich people in school. That is how God does his thing. First term, um, secondary school, speech and prize giving day, my mother came to weep because... I swept three hours for accounting, business management, and costing. They, were, they learned two weeks ahead of me, but that is how God said, I will make you. So you have to be able to learn to pay the price. Some of us are not ready to pay the price. The price that comes with it is to, for you to be able to uh, forgo a lot of things. You have to forgo a lot of things as young people. My brother, how old are you? Sixteen. You can decide today that me, I'll forgo a lot of pleasures. Our generation, we like watching television too much. We like watching movies too much. My, my brother-in-law can watch movies up to 4 a.m. And I went to his room that, when I was sleeping, I heard you watching a movie in your room. I said, how? How can you watch a movie from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m.? You kill the brain cells. You kill the brain cells. So at this time that you are young, forgo a lot of things. Pay the price. If you want to excel academically, you have to be willing to invest time in your studies, in your personal development. Those of us in the universities, some of you don't like attending seminars. Some of you don't like attending workshops, conferences. Our focus is to make A's. I tell you, A's will not make you become successful in life. Get total education. Attend seminars, attend conference, have a total embodiment, begin to pay the price. Learn to pay the price and go the extra mile. There are no tricks to becoming successful academically. Some of us have tricks. If you're an Adventist and you cheat in exams, God will not bless you. How many of us have been cheating in the exam? I know you not raise your hands. <laughs> you see, I learned that principle right from secondary school. That if I will fail, I will fail honorably. If I will pass, I will pass honorably. It was difficult 
Because sometimes your mate will be sitting beside Franklin. Franklin, question two, question two. You know, in university, Cape Coast University, you'll be writing a paper. The one sitting next to you, his, your question number 50 is his question one. His question two is your question 15. So, low betides you ask him question two. He's giving you poison. <laughs> They've changed the wording and the numbering of the questions. Begin to, excellence begin from there. Holiness is part of it. So when you want to do that, tell yourself that I will not cheat in exams and I will not help others to cheat. Fail. And God will bless you in your failure. Amen. You see, the reason why sometimes we want to cheat is that we think that it is the grade that will make us survive in life. But when you understand that it is God who will make us to survive in life, why do you cheat? If I fail, God is your business. Whom do you want to please? God or human beings? So let us learn to pay the price and begin to develop the right mental attitude. He said, important that you see big picture, discover your big purpose as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Have a plan for yourself. Have a well plan for yourself. Know where you want to go. I told you you take an exam. The people I was, I was talking to, the uh, coordinator, our, our manager, that uh, it needs a soft, it's a soft word. So if I print it out, it will not be able to grade you. So I'll give you the link, then everybody will take the quiz on your phone or on a laptop separately. It will tell you your personality and the kind of course or career that will be good for you. Have a vision and know exactly what you want. I know as you grow, changes come on the line. But when you have a purpose, when the changes are coming, you are able to accommodate the changes that come with life. But you must have a goal as early as in life. There are CEOs who are 19 years and they are running, running Fortune 500 companies. CEOs, 19 years. We had a program where uh, they got, uh, we had a donor funding and we were giving $10,000 for any young person who is a CEO of a company between the ages of 15 years to 21. In Kumasi, we couldn't find somebody who is 15 years and is a CEO of a company. So the $10,000 had to be returned. If you put your thinking cap on, you can begin to be very innovative right from your school age. We become too dependent upon our parents. That is why, as soon as you also finish your national service, they also become too dependent on you. In Ghana, you share your national service with your family, your national service allowance. Your mother will call you, Kojo, Uniaketo, and you fees. So you have to bring some of your allowance. Can you do only national service? Those in the nursing training college and in teacher training, they share their allowances with their family. You share, yes. So, because life is difficult. Some of you, your parents have some, so they will not. But the best is that you can be able to uh, do things well in life. That when your child is going to get married, you build a house for your kid, get him or her a car, and say, this is what I live for you. Start up your life with it. Wouldn't it be nice that you are going to get married? Your dad will say, eh, Abigail, Kofi, Kwesi, uh, this is your car, this is your house. Start your life with your husband and wife. This is your car key. That should, that's how life should be. But this one, huh? your first pay, your mother takes some. For we fathers, you just give her Star Wars. But now it is, the dynamics are changing. Men are becoming very responsible. We are taking care of our children very well. So we know when you buy a bag of rice for your mother, you also buy some for us. When you buy a mobile phone for your mother, you can give her Star Wars. You also give her a mobile phone. So begin to focus, have a vision. Develop the right mentality. Don't leave this Congress and go and your academic life is the same, your personal life is the same. Have a plan. Have a plan for yourself. That's for me, every morning, every week, every day, that's what I'm going to do. And work towards my goal. That is very important. I'll pause here. Any question or comment from my senior brothers? They want to... Add anything? Any question? Yes. My question is when you spoke of education, I 
said is different from school and so I want you to throw more light on the Okay. What you are getting in school is also education. Okay, I'll say I want to. Have you heard the slogan that Have you heard that? That is, you don't have education. That's what they want to tell you. You have school, but only if you answer. A answer is the education we are talking about. So that's the total embodiment of your hobby. So whilst you are schooling, make sure that every faculty of your being is developed. Every faculty of your being is fully developed. That is very, very important, my brothers and sisters. That is why for, for we Seventh Adventists, we are privileged. Now as Congresses, the Sabbath School, we get so many, so, so many things that is teaching us what life goes all about. Even in school, we have relationship seminars. Every aspect of our life is being educated. We are building every aspect. So don't just get the grade. If you're only working for the grade, it means that you're just getting a schooling. You're not getting a proper education. So education is a total embodiment. And you have to begin to work at it. Now let's look at developing good steady habits. As young people, you know now, fortunately, current survey shows that students spend close to almost 45% of their time on their phones. True or false? 45% of your time, you spend it on your phone. When put together 24 hours, 45, you were just scrolling your phone and looking at messages. So the intellectual ability to think and to reason is going down among students. People cannot reason and come out with very good arguments. Because even when it comes to research work, we just dab. You know dabbing? You just dab from the internet. Copy and paste. I know people who pay some of us to do their project work for them. If you come to me to do your project work for you, I'll charge you a lot because you are lazy. Especially the MBA students. MBA in Ghana for me is, is for sale. It's for sale. So when doing your homework or your assignment, find an environment where you can lay all of your study materials out and have easy access to reference materials. When you want to study, put your phone off. Every minute that you switch between your book and your phone, you lose concentration. And you have to backtrack, restart all over again to read through the notes. You must work in a clean environment, free of clutter. Some of us, when we come to our study table, I'll show you one. Have you seen somebody's room? where the computer is and where his books are. How, how do you learn in this environment? You must have a clean desk. 
your book and other reference material that you use. This person will say, I'm doing a lot of referencing. But it's, a, it's cluttered. And it's not good for a learning environment. Ask yourself, how do you learn? Some of us, whilst we are learning, the television is on. How, how are you learning? What, how can you learn at the same time with your TV on? It's the same way that if you want to do serious concentration, make sure that your phone will be off. You, except, what are you using your phone for? Except maybe if you have a laptop, you are doing some research, you want to use it as a hotspot. But then, you have to make sure that you deactivate the call system so that call cannot come through. You need to be able to have a free environment that is conducive for learning. Try not to study in the bed. How many of us like studying on our beds? You ask your question. How many of us like studying on our beds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I. Some of us can even read accounting on the bed. <laughs> but it's not a good habit. It's not a good habit to learn on your bed. The kitchen or in a room where you would normally watch TV or play video games. That's a temptation. You don't have to be sleeping. If you want to have your concentration, make sure that you have a clean environment. Your mind is made up to study. Your phone is off. You are well prepared to absorb. That will go a long way to help you. My brother, you raise your hand. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for those people and other people who can't like diligently stay in like quiet places yeah. and stuff, can their spaces be a little different than a clear desk? Okay. You, you must work with what you think help you. There are some people who, when they are steady, they want to have their earphones on and be listening to music. They say that's the best absorption they get. I wonder. But there are people like that. They have their earpiece on, and they seem that they are reading their notes. And I say, hey, this guy may be having a double brain, <laughs> which is really good to listen to music and read at the same time. So look at yourself. Probably for you, it is when your place is dirty, that's when you can absorb. <laughs> but I tell you the truth, have a clear environment to be able to learn. That's, that's, yes, sir? Um, about the question that my brother asked here is one about it. Okay. Yeah. Something about knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. He told us to understand that knowledge is acquiring something and wisdom is how to apply it. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, as he said, application of knowledge is what we need to I mean, consider yeah. a lot as students as we are. Because I've seen one trend in Ghana here that we kind of read the books, write the exams, pass the exams, and then we'll forget. Pass. And forget everything. Yeah. That is true and poor. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that is killing us as a nation. Okay. Because we don't think outside the box. Always. Um, a friend told me that we Africans just only one way to I mean, solve the problem. Because if you have somebody, what is matter? It's the same answer that Definition. all of us are going to I mean, give. So thank you very much for giving us this um, seminar. Okay. Because like, you see people like five, um, nine years, ten years being. Proud and boldly say that I'm the CEO of this and this year. Yeah. By year, all of us will say that I want to complete school and then get a job at the corporate uh, environment. In Ghana, by the time you are CEO, you have four years to retire. That is <laughs> so we need to rethink and rewrite our story as um, students in the country. Yeah. My, 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 my big brother, Mr. Ose Yaweje, he was a full banker, an investment banker. He quit his bank and decided to be on his own. Most of us here will not have that courage. Hey, secure job, secure life. Then I leave the banking field and no other bank than uh, Data Bank as an investment banker. And he was in a senior position. And you have to begin to, all this comes from personal motivation. When you don't have a personal motivation, you can't do some of these things. So we want the breed of Adventists that are coming to have a different type of education. That by the time you are out of school, you know where you are going. Sure. You are not going to sit home, ma, in front of me for interview. That kind of thinking is babyish thinking. 
we must begin to grow up. Growing up means, doesn't mean that you have to be 30. You can grow up at 9, because, but your maturity is different. So there's somebody 12 years, but the person can mingle with older people because the person is matured in the mind. That's the kind of education we want you to seek. So when we are studying, establish a steady routine. Some of us, we don't have a routine. How many of us have a routine and we follow through? Most of us, we do our own timetable. Monday, physics, Tuesday, mathematics, Wednesday. The, the whole week, we don't fulfill any one of the timetables that we have placed on the wall. We don't fulfill any. But when the mind is trained to have a routine in terms of learning, it helps. Humans need routine in their lives. It brings order and helps you to prepare yourself mentally. It helps you to prepare yourself mentally. And you become very disciplined. In the academic life, if you are not disciplined, you can't go far. In the same way, if you are not disciplined, you can't be able to be proactive for you to be able to stand out on your own. That you want to think and create something. It, 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 it involves a lot of discipline. To be creative, to think and to go even against the educational system. Some of us decide that we'll go against the educational system. How do you do that? It's if you have prepared yourself. That is when you can begin to go against the educational system. You go to the library, whilst your friends are preparing for quizzes, you are studying extra materials, which is not even part of your course. Because that particular thing will help you to achieve something in the near future. So that is where your focus and attention is. That is how we want you to begin to think. You must always be step ahead of your classmates. You must always be step ahead of them. If they are ahead of you academically, in terms of other areas, you must be step ahead of your colleagues. That is the only way you can be able to be more competitive. That is the only way. And that is important. So discipline athletes, musicians, etc., understand this principle very well. Every athlete understands the principles of discipline, becoming mentally strong. Hossein Bolt is running his final race. When is that? I think it's in September. And he's preparing towards that race because that is his last race. If Hossein Bolt is not, doesn't set a record with that race, he will come back again. He wants to end his career. So he's preparing feverishly. They don't eat certain things, they don't drink certain things, they, they don't sleep in certain hours, all just to make sure to achieve a certain purpose. So for you to push, to get the higher education you want, you must deny yourself certain things, you must not even eat certain things, you must not indulge in certain things. If we as young people who are here can keep ourselves, hmm? my sisters, don't allow any gentleman to waste your time. Don't lose yourself up before you get married. It makes you, a lot of girls are frustrated on campuses because some younger boy has slept with them and has dejected them. You remember Ken USD, people are, girls are committing suicide. If you want to pursue higher, forgo all those things for now and concentrate because the boys will give you a heart attack. They will not allow you to concentrate. For Ben, he just, he finished, he's thinking about something else. He tells you, I couldn't sleep, I was thinking about you. He's lying. You are not even part of his dreams. <laughs> so why do you worry yourself with them? Make sure that you are building yourself up and develop that system so you can be able to be on top of your career. Turn off your phones, close out Facebook, Twitter, and other social mediums when you study. Now, even primary school children have phones. They know how to go and do Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter. Do your socialization before or after you study. Get some of these things. Even those of us who are adults have sticker notes. To serve as what? Reminders. So sometimes on your laptop, when you're working at home, you have a lot of stickers on your laptop on the wall facing you because you have timelines for everything you are doing. Some of us, the 24 hours is not enough for us. So we wish it is 48 hours per day. I tell you the truth. But some of you, have, the 24 hours is too long that you want to waste it. 
So some of us sometimes will be begging, oh God, I have these things to do, I have this, I have that, I have that. So get some note stickers. But fortunately, our phones, you know our phones have all these things there. But, but you don't go there. You're only interested in using it for Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Get note stickers as reminders. Have time bounds. Set time limit for every activity. When you have that, some of us, our friends spend our times for us. They come, oh, this is vacation. Can I come home so that we watch some movies today? Oh, yes, you can come. So you don't have anything doing. And the person comes to waste your time the whole day. Those of us in the corporate world, you can't just say, oh, Franklin, today I'm passing in front of your office and I decide to come and visit you. My office is not a visitation uh, where, where you come and... But the person can pass in five minutes, ten minutes maximum, you are done. And for the person to come and sit in your office the whole day, it doesn't happen. Do the same thing for your personal life. Have block times. When somebody calls you for anything, he said, I am sorry, two o'clock Sunday is booked. Some of us, we are not booked though. And they'll call movers. When you have that kind of lifestyle, you don't make progress. So get yourself booked. Tell the person, I'm sorry, 12 o'clock on this day, I have this kind of thing. Have set time limit for everything that you do and you are doing. So sometimes you can socialize on Facebook or on WhatsApp after you are tired. When you have done all the things that you need to do and you are tired and you want to relax, then you go and chat people up. You know, way back in school, secondary school, you remember, the clever guys, they go and learn the whole night. When they come, then they'll be lazing about, disturbing you. Oh, for me, uh, uh, this thing, I, I won't waste time. I don't even understand it. Well, he has learned everything the whole night. Those people are wicked friends, though. They've learned the whole night, but they want to pile away their time, so they want to do it with you. So you must also be able to make sure that you book your time. So our phones, which is taking a chunk of our time, let's begin to learn to how to dip it in water. Let's learn how to do that. And we'll go a long way. Now, set goals and reward yourself. As our sister said, she set goals for herself. When you set a goal that today, if I'm able to go through all these 10 pages of the book, I'll buy myself a bottle of moths. You are rewarding yourself. So, or I'll watch a movie. Sometimes when you have done a lot of office work and you're very successful, you get to, you want to watch some movie with your wife. Today, no laptop. You come, when you come from work, you don't even open your laptop. I, they know us. When you go home, as soon as you finish eating, the laptop is back again. Even while you are eating, the laptop is on. You are working. But when you are able to achieve the things you set out to do, you do what? You reward yourself. So have some reward mechanic. Maybe today, so with my case, for instance, we set certain things. When you're able to achieve it, when I'm coming from work, doing that you have a chocolate or you have something, you set yourself some reward for yourself to reward yourself. Shadow your work and include a reward system. Complete a significant portion of your work where you master a concept, finish a number of problems, or have written or a significant portion of your assignment. Make sure that what you set out to do for the day, it is done. Once you are done with it, rest. Reward yourself. Get something to be able to make sure that you are happy. That is how we do things. When you're able to build in rewards mechanism into your shadows, you always ensure that you are happy and you, you are always glad to go. Some of us have difficult subjects. Anytime it's mentioned in class, your tummy begins to wrangle. But you must learn how to master a difficult subject. Hmm? Learn how to master a difficult subject. When I have a difficult subject, I remember when we get to Form 2, secondary school, they said all those who want to do become or business administration accounting option, you must do uh, elective maths. I said, what kind of, we have done costing from first year, second year, and now they are introducing. So we had less than one and a half year, I mean less than a year to do the whole syllabus of elective maths. So some of it, it became a god. So every, at every timetable, elective maths is on top, and that is the first thing, because it's a difficult subject. So you must always ensure that the difficult subjects that you have, you tackle them first. Because when you don't tackle them first, and you have done the one you enjoy doing, 
you find it lazy to tackle the difficult one. Do you get me? So all your, the difficult subject that you have, put them, grant them more time on your shadows and make sure that you pay attention to them and you complete what you set out to do. Reward yourself with social time. When you are tired, you have done a lot of work and you can attest to it. You can go on Facebook and now check on what your friends are doing and do some chatting. You do that with no guilt. Hmm? But when you have not done that and you are even chatting, then you have some guilty conscience. Hey, my books you so try me. But make sure that you include uh, these times within your shadow. A little TV or some other form of entertainment, but be cautious of television. Be cautious of TV. I know what TV, I've been a general manager of a TV station before. I know what TV can do. Some of the things you see are not real. Eh? We put a lot of things into it, make sure that we can get you glued to your seat for hours. You know, when God helped you to live for 75 years, averagely, you sleep for 25 years. Because the average sleep time is eight hours for every average human being. Eight hours, eight hours for 75 years is 25 years together, continuous of your life. Takes 25 years from your 75 years. How many years are left? 50. When you spend three, uh, three hours every day watching TV, that is close to 15 years of your life. Hmm? Take 15 years from 50, uh, 55. Uh, sorry, uh, so you have 35 left. Women averagely spend one year combing their hair if they live for 75 years. That's the number of hours they are using to comb their hair. We averagely, our Ghanaian foods, we averagely spend two to three hours preparing for food. True or false? By the time you finish that Benkwai, put the cassava on, let it be ready. By the time you serve yourself in your eating, you spend over three hours preparing that food. That's why Otabel was talking about not just eating fufu. So we can go into uh, eating the neat fufu. Every fufu is fufu, true or false? Uh, As Ante will not agree with you. <laughs> he just said will not agree with you. I see a penny at Tim Tim. So we've got to the point where how we are wasting our time, how we have to manage the time very well. Now you take uh, 15 years out of the uh, 50 years left, you have 35. Now, women use one year combing their hair. No, we use uh, three hours cooking. That's additional uh, 15 years gone. You see, averagely, by the time you finish, the actual productive aspect of our life is less than 10 years, if, if you're able to live for 75 years. But a lot of things we do in life do not add anything to our lives. So watch the kind of where you are spending your time. Watch who is spending the time for you. And make sure that you'll be able to have a way. If possible, get involved with the study group. How many of us have study groups? When I go to the university, you know, sometimes you have, you attend certain lectures, 3,000 people, especially the common courses. So when they become, I, I looked up for some of the sharp guys, and I said, guys, let's come together to form a study group. And when we did, our group became assignments. You can go to the girls can go to bed. We'll do it for them. Don't be in that group where people will do the things for you. <laughs> and it helps when you are in a very good study group. You learn from people. You don't go there to only chat, but you go there to study. Form your own with other classmates that are not what lazy. When you have lazy study mates, you call them. Oh, today can you postpone it? But you go. They are sitting at JCR. Watching Manchester United, Chelsea. So have people who are not lazy, who go the extra mile, and they come to the study group, you, they look as if they are the TAs. You know those kind of students? When they are teaching you at the study group, they look like the TAs of the lecturers. They give you something that, the way they will even explain a certain concept, the lecturer will not even be able to explain it to that level. Those are the kind of people you must associate yourself with. And it is important for you and I to begin to have that kind of steady group going. Make sure that you read. 
our current generation reading is out. True or false? No, it's not our copy. No, no, we trying to picture. No, or that or the boy that then they circulate among them. So this is the notes. So apart from the notes, they don't read any other textbook. You're only preparing yourself for exams. You're not preparing yourself for life. As Mr. Osse said, you get people with first class. When I went to risk structure Eden Microfinance, we wanted uh, seven people to fill a vacancy as branch managers. We requested for the applications. We, had, we were looking for seven people. We had close to 570 applications. When you pack them, it's like this. Some of them, you just by glancing through, you just throw away. You glance through, you throw away. Those who came for the interview, simple application of knowledge, they can't. But when you look at their CV, they are first class students. Read. You must go beyond your course. Some of us, we don't buy books. 20% of all my income goes into buying books. Every money I get, 20% is for books. After paying God your tithe and your offering, 20% I dedicate to books. So I buy people's books, I read different journals, which are not even in my area. So you can get broader scope of things. You can get what is happening. How many of us have read uh, Forbes magazine before? Forbes Africa? You, some people, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> what, 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 what is that? You see, you, you read, because I want to be rich. Eh? So I read about the, those uh, rich entrepreneurs, how they are making it in the Forbes magazine, the category of wealth. I read about it and I said, so how can I go there? How can I do this? That is how you get information. When you are not informed, you are deformed. A student who is not informed, there are some students who don't even have emails. I was surprised. University students, they don't even have an email. They don't even have an email. You want to send them a document, oh boss, me a hard copy and can be paid. Hard copy. <laughs> they don't even have an email. You must inform yourself. Read wide. If you are a nurse, read at what is happening in the nursing fraternity. Read about the job availability of the kind of profession you want to go into it. Read biographies and autobiographies of people. Get to know them. You become versatile. It shapes your thoughts, your writing, your thinking abilities. When you learn, you mount the puppet to preach, you have stuff in your head to share. My ladies, they don't read the spirit of prophecy books. The gentlemen, you can get 10% of them reading. Ask my Mr. Sese, they threw me a dead do Read. Our head sweet us. <laughs> Read. Instead, book a time. Hmm? I have a book in my bag every day, every week in the book I'm reading. This week, this is the book I'm reading. The A to Z of personal finance. I bought it because I'm working on a book called A to Z of entrepreneurship. So when I saw this one in the bookshelf, I met this lady from Nigeria. We were attending the workshop. And when I saw it in her rack, I said, Nimi, I want to get a copy of your book. He said, okay, in Nigeria, this will go for $20. And so I have to buy it. She brought it from Nigeria, $20. Ghana cities, almost 80 Ghana. I bought 80 Ghana cities. She gave it to me 80. <laughs> because I, I'm working on something A to Z of entrepreneurship. So when I saw her A to Z of personal finance, I was interested. And the whole week, apart from my uh, biblical books I'm reading, this week I'm reading Ministry of Healing, because I'm doing some devotionals on uh, health. So I'm reading Ministry of Healing. So apart from that, so when I'm sitting somewhere waiting for somebody, I open a page and I read. So instead of fidgeting with my phone, Facebook, 30 minutes I can read two chapters. Let's read. Read your school books. Read other materials that will help you to be able to make decisions. 
Build your mental faculty. Build your personality. That is how we build a life. So don't spend a lot of time on your phone. If it's on your phone, then get PDF books. There are a lot of PDF books available. Download them and read them. Instead of listening to a lot of stories people paste on your pages. Spend time reading. And it opens your mind. Take notes in class. Some of you came here. You're just looking at me like this. By the time you are done, you go back home like that. When you go, some of you will be put in charge of PF. You can share with them some of the things that you are learning from NAS Congress. You are not taking notes. The same attitude that we bring here is the same thing we show in lecture halls. Or for lecture halls, because you want an A, you take notes. You know some people, they are so lazy that now when they go, they record the lecturer. They don't take notes. So they sit at a place, the lecturer speaks, and they can record the lecture. So that when they get to the room, they listen to the lecture while they are sleeping. That's a lazy approach. That is a lazy approach. Write. When you write something, it sticks. Do you know that? That is why we use the mnemonics when we are writing. Sometimes you have some small jotter notes. You write some few things. You memorize some. That is how things stick in the mind. It doesn't stick just by, by just listening and memorizing. None of us have been able to even challenge our lecturer in class because we are only consumers. There was a time, I remember, a monetary economy. We had done, I and my roommate, she, he was also a becomer. We've studied some things on monetary economy and the economy of Ghana by Professor Aite. We had all the books of Professor Aite. So before the lecture started, we were well informed. He put a definition on board. He says, sir, this definition is wrong. It doesn't fit in with the economic arrangement the system of Ghana. The lecturer debated. Then later he said, hey, gentlemen, come and lean that note down here. But after the lecture, he said, hey, you wanted to disgrace me in front of all these people. <laughs> he said, no, well, only, he said, no, you don't do that to your lecturers. Approach me quietly and step on my toe that uh, this is how the whole thing is. You were right, but I can't accept that thing in front of the whole class. <laughs> you have to go extra. Extra ma. To be able to learn something. Be sure that you write down the high points of what the teacher discusses. The high point. When teachers are teaching, they know what will come into the exam. So listen to the teacher carefully. Most of us, even while the teacher is talking, we will be what's happening in class. Even we do that while the preacher is preaching, how much more at a lecture. So why the teacher is like, so a lot of the points we miss at the lecture room. Be sure you write down the high point of what the teacher and note the area that you have trouble. Anything that he says and you don't get it, note it. Now, unfortunately, while you are lecturing, somebody will be Googling some of the things, the definitions you give. They just Google. And if you're a teacher or a lecturer, you are not well prepared. Your student can disgrace you because they have the internet right in front of them. So make sure that wherever you have trouble, you, have, you lack understanding, you note it. Know the areas that your teacher says are important. Some of the lecturers will tell you, this particular thing is very important. Note it. Because they know that it will come into the exam. They know that it's important for understanding. So note all that. Review notes as soon as you can after you have taken a class. Eh? When I go to seminars, as soon as the seminar is over, I go through the seminars, all the things that they mention. You take steps from there. When you go for a lecture, as soon as you are done that day, you get to your room, review all the notes you took in class. If you like, practice. Leave the note for one week. You know, even recognize your own handwriting. True or false? You know, recognize what was I trying to write? So don't put your notes down and wait. Just at the end or close of that day, review your notes. Review your notes. Organize your notes in the notebook. Include a title, a date for your notes. There are some people, when you pick their notebook, it is lovely. They are very organized, especially some ladies. Very organized with their notes. So those people, you go to them and photocopy their notes. Cool. Everything, as if it's a textbook, well arranged. Well arranged. 
make sure that you become very organized. <coughs> Keep your notes in a set place so you can gain access to them. Some of us will write on pieces of paper. A time will come, you are looking for it. You come through all the books in your room looking for that particular note that you wrote on a piece of paper. Make sure that where they are on sheets of paper, they are filed. When you get organized in school, you get organized at the workplace also. That is how you achieve maximum results. Recopy your notes if it is necessary. If you took them as a short term, recopy the notes whilst you are doing research. Sometimes, when you, most of us, we don't use the library. We only go and sit in the library for a space. So, the, uh, I don't blame you. The books since 1986 is the same textbooks that are still there. Your fathers use the same textbook. You're also using the same textbook. That's the problem we have with our Ghanaian educational system. There are some universities abroad, every year, two years, they change the entire library. Then they ship those books down to us, and we are happy. <laughs> so please, fortunately now, you can go to the internet. You can get current information on every topic that you want. So make sure that you use all these facilities. And I'll be ending at this point. You have to stay motivated. Stay motivated. You have to stay motivated. How do you stay motivated? One of them, yourself. When you have a plan and you know where you want to go, let that be enough. Me, I told myself that I come from a poor home. So God, please help me to be the one who will eradicate poverty from my family. So that alone was a strong motivation for me. Sometimes when I'm there and I get calls from my village, Uncle, uh, yes, you have to send mobile money. Mobile money has really come to worry some of us. Because <laughs> those days, yeah. no mobile money, so it will take some time for the money to go to the village. But now it is instant. They want it. That alone is a motivation that no, I can't sleep because they will call me from the village that my grandmother is not well. And I have to look for something and send to my grandmother. So that is a motivation that I should not sleep. God's work. Sometimes when you sit in the church house and you look at your church building, you look at evangelism, and you don't have the money to be able to push it. I say, God, no, I have to get money. I have to be rich that I can support. Like this evangelism, I can say that take 10,000 cities and take the entire bus, go. And you feel fulfilled. But when the money is not there, you sit there quite as if you are a useless person. So that alone is a huge motivation that I don't have to sleep because of God's work. And as Mr. Osset said, you have to feel part and part of God's work. Somebody told me, that when you get so much involved with God's work, it's even shielded you from death. I was surprised. Because God knows that this my servant has a work to do for me. So whatever I have to do to protect him or her, I have to. But when you are idle, God doesn't have any use for you. Honorable, you know our friend uh, Hayford? That year, we were giving Hayford Hayford was the national secretary for NAS. So they handed over, he took the position when he was in level 300. So the following year, uh, they handed over to uh, Legon. We said, come and take fellowship position. He said, I'm tired with NAS work. I want to go vacation, I'll go to UK. Hayford went to UK, he came as a living corpse. Well, that's one of the painful death NAS experience. Somewhere in 2005. So it was one of the painful deaths we experienced. Pastor will have to go and anoint him at Kolebu. When he was coming from UK, they had to put a pillow to support him before he can sit up in the plane. Anytime we said, we are tired of God's work, God become tired of us. I said, hey, for take a position for local. He wanted him to become the fellowship president. Because I said, national executive, now you have handed over Papa and Co were going. So we needed somebody to hold. He said, I am tired. This year I will not take any position this year. He went to UK. 
came paralyzed, died that same. Even he died just when school resumes. Something has to motivate you. Don't just study and leave the work of God. Let them go hand in hand. That is the only way God will bless you. And bless the effort you put. So there must be a lot of things to motivate you. Surround yourself with your dreams. Find ways to keep yourself engaged directly with the thing you would like to do. So your goal does not seem so far removed. Your projects, your summer internships. How many of you go for summer internship? Fortunately, some of you also uh, go for uh, summer evangelism. One of the fantastic things. These are ways you get yourself involved with God's work. Stay motivated for God. And God will put you higher. The Bible says that see a man who is diligent in his work. And he will stand before what? Great men and kings. And he will not stand before mere people. And I can attest to that. God will take you to places you never dreamed that you'll be. God will take you to places. Just by working for God. Just by staying, staying focused to God's work. He takes care of your academics. He takes care of your health. He, some of us, a whole year, we have not seen the doctor. It's not because we are good. But God is protected so that he can use some of the money that you, uh, you, you as medication to pay for some of the things in church. God will protect your family. Stay motivated and do things for the Lord. So let's some few tips. I'm ending on the staying motivated so we can continue tomorrow. There's no quick fix for lack of motivation. So if you want to stay motivated, the key to overcoming procrastination is having a vision. Most of us, our problem is that we procrastinate a lot. Yesterday, the AJM talked about it. Procrastination is a thief of time. Don't do procrastination. Stay. Let something motivate you to get the thing going. Get that hard subject going. No matter the course. Look, every course is important. First degree is first degree. Don't let your friends tell you that the visual art you are doing is not important. The archaeology you are doing is not important. If you are highly motivated, you can do the archaeology, God will place you in a different level. Yes. He's an engineer. Mm -hmm. an, an engineer now managing mutual funds. As a fund manager. He, he, he brought mutual funds into Ghana. Yeah. He, he, he brought mutual funds into Ghana. An engineer, not a banking and finance person. Mm -hmm.